Hello! In this presentation we'll talk about matrix representations for linear and to a lesser extent for affine transformations. We'll also apply this to rotations. Uh, this is taken from parts of section 2 of chapter 2 in the PDF of the textbook online. Uh, so we've been talking about linear transformations. You remember from your linear algebra class, of course, that linear transformations are those transformations that can be represented by matrices. So I haven't mentioned matrices yet, so let's now talk about how that fits into the picture here. So we're working in R2. So we're viewing R2 as a two-dimensional vector space with over the reals. And our points, uh, which we denote x or y with vector signs over them, are column vectors members of this two-dimensional vector space. So we might have x is the column vector x1, x2, and we also use the notation with angle brackets. Angle bracket x1, x2, uh, although it's written as a row, with the angle brackets there, what I'm signaling is that I really mean it to be a column vector. And the whole point of this is merely to save space when typesetting, so that a row of numbers takes up less space than a column of numbers when it's typeset in the book. So the angle brackets mean it's really a column vector. With like a, think of that as a two, two by one matrix, if you wish. And we have a linear transformation A is mapping R2 to R2, and we want to give a matrix for it. So let's look at two special uh, vectors in R2, the standard basis vectors are called i and j, and j, and this i is the vector 1, 0, that is the column vector 1, 0, and j is the column vector 0, 1. Okay, and let's just let u be the vector that's the value of a of i. So let u be a of the first standard basis vector i, and let v be a of, of j. And we'll write u in the form with its components. u has two components, u1 and u2, its x and y components. And v has its two components, which I'll call v1 and v2. And we're going to use these to give a matrix representation for A. And so the claim here is then we let M be the matrix with columns U1, U2 is the first column and V1, V2 is the second column. And the claim is this represents A, the transformation A in that the following holds that M, the matrix M times the vector X is equal to the result of transforming X with the linear transformation A in that. Okay. And um, the proof is pretty easy. It's just direct calculation. So for the first, let's start off with this. So mx is equal to, writing it out in terms of coefficients, u1, u2, v1, v2, times x1, x2. And that's equal to just doing normal matrix multiplication. We take the inner product of the column x1, x2 with the first row and then with the second row. And we get u1, x1 plus u2 plus v1, x2 as the first entry and u2, x1 plus v2, x2 is the second entry. And on the other hand, a applied to x, we can write x in the form x has components x1, x2, so this is the same as a applied to x1 times the vector i plus x2 times the vector j. So x1 and x2 are scalars, i and j are the standard basis elements. By linearity, that's the same as a of x1i plus a of x2, 
2j because the a applied to a sum is the sum of a applied to the components of the sum. Again, by linearity, that's x1 times a of i plus x2 times a of j. And that's equal to, by definition, x1 times the vector u plus x2 times the vector v. And now v, u and v are the column vectors, u1, u2, so that's equal to x1 times the column vector u1, u2 plus x2 times the column vector v1, v2. And then we just group things together. That's the same as x1, u1 plus x2, v1 is the first entry. And the second entry is x1, u2 plus x2, v2. And we can see that this is equal to this, apart from the order of the products. And so uh, this proves the claim. So the moral of the story here is that we look at the action of the transformation on the standard basis vectors. Uh, that gives us values u and v. The columns of the matrix M are equal to the images, the values of A, on the vector i and the vector j on the standard basis vectors. So this gives a very intuitive way to look at the, what a matrix means. The columns of a matrix mean the images of the linear transformation on the uh, standard basis vectors. A very important but intuitive and simple fact about matrices. So let's do a quick example. So for this example, I'm going to show the action of A as it transforms an F shape, and then we'll build the matrix from it. So here, consider uh, the linear transformation A that does the following. It takes the F in standard position. Remember, this was this F sitting in the X on top of the XYZ x, y axes. So here's the origin, 0, 0. Here's 1, 0. Here's 0, 1, 1, 1, and 0, minus 1. And it gets transformed by A to a different F. Let me draw the axes for this. Here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis, and so the origin is here, 0, 0. Here's the point, 1, 1. This will be the central bar of the F. Here's the point, minus 1, 1. Up here is the point, 0, 2, sitting a little bit awkwardly up in the text. Uh, here's the top part of the F, and here's the point. 1 minus 1. So the linear transformation A takes this F in standard position and transforms it to that F there. So then the matrix that represents A is as follows. We look at the image of 1, 0 that's here, that's the u, this is the u value, and the image of 0, 1, that's here, that's the v value, and the matrix that represents it then is the matrix 1, 1, that's u, written in column form, minus 1, 1, that's v, also in column form. So just by looking at the image of the F, we can see what the matrix is. We will sometimes write this in reduced form, block form, as U, V. 
So here I put the vector signs back on. That means that u is a column vector of length 2 because we're in R2. v is a column vector of length 2. And this means the 2 by 2 matrix with these entries. So let's try some rotations next. So for this example, we're going to do a rotation through angle theta. And we write r theta, and this means rotate counterclockwise CCW around the origin. So what this means is we've got the plane, R2, we think of sticking a pin in the origin to hold it fixed, and then we turn the plane, or the images in the plane, the angle theta, in the counterclockwise direction from the point of viewer. And so we, can, we want to get a matrix for this, so we want the matrix representation of R theta. So what we do is we just need to look at what R theta does to the standard basis elements. So let me just draw this all on one image here. So here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis, here's the origin, here is 1, 0, which is our i, here is 0, 1, which is our j. And if we think about rotating, we're holding the origin fixed and the points are moving in a counterclockwise direction around. So if we go angle theta up here, this point is going to be r theta of i. And since this is angle theta, that's going to be cosine of theta, that's the x component, and sine of theta, that's the y component at this point. And likewise, the point j is going to come angle theta this way. And this is this is going to be have component minus sine of theta cosine of theta so this is cosine of theta this is length sine of theta so x equals minus cos minus sine of theta there so this is um, r theta of j so the matrix for the rotation is the first column is cosine theta sine theta. The second column is minus sine theta cosine theta. And that gives us the two by two matrix representing the rotation. So let's talk about what this means for representing affine transformations. Affine transformations, for the moment, we're not going to represent them by a single matrix. Later on, we'll see how to represent them by a single 3x3 three three matrix when we're working R2. But for the moment, let's just talk about what happens with the representations that we have so far. So let's do the following affine transformation as an example here. We're going to um, use something similar to the last example I used for linear uh, transformation with the F shape, but I'm going to um, also add a translation. So we start off with the F as usual in standard position. So here's 1, 0, here's 0, 0, here's 0, 1, etc. And this gets transformed to 
a rotated stretched and translated F. So here's the x-axis for the image, the y-axis for the image, and I'm going to translate this rotated thing to 2, 1. So this will be the point 2, 1 here, and the F is going to look like like this. It's going to go So this is 2, 1, this is 3, 2, this is 1, 2, this is 2, 3, here's 3, 0. So what we've done is we've taken the F, it's been reshaped and rotated in exactly the same as the previous F, but it's also been translated to here. And so the way we write this, we have here, though this is done by the transformation A, a of x is going to be the following. We're to take our matrix from before. Now we're looking at what happens to the to the standard vector i here. We think of it as being a vector now that's moving around. It moved to this thing, right? And this this has length 1, 1. So it's going to be 1, 1. The image of the j vector, here's j, and its image is here. Right, and that was the vector j has negative one x component, positive one y component, and it's, I'm sorry, the image of a of j, this is a of j. And so the image of j has y comp x component minus 1 and y component 1. So we have minus 1 we have minus 1 1 times x1 x2 plus the translation amount to 1. So what we've got here is we've got the translation And here we've got the linear part. And for the time being, that's the best we can do on representing affine transformations with matrices. But we'll see, as I already mentioned, how to, to do this later on with a 3x3 matrix. And that's all for this presentation. Thank you.